You know, some years ago, I did uh, a video on this whole water myth that everyone needed to drink a certain amount of water or else they're going to be dehydrated. And it kind of shook up quite a few people because everyone knows that eight glasses of water is like the law. You have to drink at least eight glasses of water because your body is mostly water. And so that video created a confusion because when you tell a person the opposite theory of what they're basing this uh, concept of water on, it can really put someone into a uh, kind of a confusion. So I wanted to do this video to give you some interesting new points on water in general in its ability to hydrate your cells. First thing you need to know is what is hydration? Is hydration just water in your cells? Actually, no, it's not. How does that water get into the cell and out of the cell? The water gets in and out of the cell through little channels that get help with electrolytes. And electrolytes are like these um, electrically charged minerals that in different concentrations inside and outside the cell, you'll get a flow, a certain flow, either going outside the cell or going inside the cell. And so a truly hydrated cell has the right amount of electrolytes inside and outside with the right amount of fluid. And a dehydrated cell is basically an imbalance of electrolytes and fluid. It's not just a lack of water. In fact, if you drink too much water, you're gonna dilute certain electrolytes and create dehydration in certain parts of your body. There's a condition called hyponatremia. That means low sodium in the blood. One cause would be you just drank a lot of pure water without any salt, and now you diluted this sodium throughout the cells. And it's very, very dangerous. You can have um, inflammation of your brain. You can actually go into a coma. So we don't get hydrated just from water. Now, on the flip side, I'm not against water. I drink water, and I think you should too. But this concept of you know carrying your gallon jug of water and just forcing yourself to drink all day long might not be the wisest thing you can do, especially if you start bypassing the normal thirst mechanism that our body was designed to tell you if you're thirsty or not. When you're not thirsty and you force your body to drink a lot of water, you can end up in trouble, especially if you exercise. There's an incredible book by this, uh, written by an exercise physiologist um, with a lot of research in long distance runners and even ultra marathon runners in relationship to hydration and if they should be drinking just a ton of water when they're not thirsty. They can end up with low sodium and actually create a big problem with their health. And then you have a lot of um, other fluids that you drink through the day that can create a diuretic effect. You can actually lose more water and become dehydrated when you drink things with caffeine, like coffee, tea, sodas. Anything you drink with caffeine is very dehydrating. And of course, alcohol, right? Um, if you reflect back on the last time you drank a lot of alcohol the next morning, you're going to be completely dehydrated. That's why you have a headache. That's why your lips are dry. And so alcohol is a diuretic and it tends to dehydrate you as well. And then what about fruit juice? Okay, would that be hydrating? Well, here's the data with glucose. Let's just take a diabetic, for example. What happens with someone with high sugar? They're peeing a lot. They have urinary frequency and they're thirsty a lot too. So the more sugar in your blood, the more your body's gonna get rid of water and the more dehydrated you're going to be. And so fruit juices, sodas, things with sugar will greatly dehydrate you. Now, what's fascinating is that um, you have all these electrolyte sport drinks with added sugar. And apparently the idea is that if you're exercising, you need some sugar to replace the loss of glucose, right? When you exercise and they call this hydration, but um, is it really hydrating you? Does consuming glucose hydrate you? I'm going to tell you, it dehydrates you. It pulls water from the cell. There is an interesting study, which I'll put down below. It's called the Nurses Health Study 2, which they did on a certain age group from 9 to 15. Now, this study wasn't about hydration, but it was interesting because it revealed an unknown consequence of drinking these healthy sports drinks. Now, the study found that if a 
teenager or young adult was consuming uh, at least one soda a day, they would have an extra pound of weight. And this is what they found. And I'm going to just generalize here. Uh, teenagers that consumed uh, one soda a day on a regular basis gained an additional two pounds of weight. Whereas those who consumed at least one sports drink a day, okay, these so-called healthy sports drinks with electrolytes, but with added sugar, gained three and a half pounds of fat extra on their bodies. So the sports drink produced more fat than the sodas. Now, this is probably because the sports drinks uh, usually come in like 32 ounces and sodas come in a 12 ouncer. So when you look at the label, you have to look at the serving size and uh, rarely does anyone just drink one serving size. They drink the whole thing. And there's more serving size in sports drinks. Now, even when people um, are consuming electrolyte powders, uh, many times these electrolyte powders and electrolyte drinks, and I won't mention any names, contain added sugar. And some uh, per serving size contain like 11 grams of sugar per serving size. Now there's four grams of sugar per teaspoon. So that's just under three teaspoons of sugar for one serving size, okay? And we're not talking about like a, a whole bottle. We're just talking about one serving size or one of those little stick packs of electrolytes. Not to mention the source of the sugar. Was it beet sugar? Probably it was. And most of the beet sugar in the US is total GMO with traces of glyphosate, which is an herbicide. And even if they're doing sugarcane, unless it's organic, is gonna have also traces of glyphosate. So that's on top of the sugar effect. So we have this effect of drinking more water, if you're gonna add electrolytes to it, and then you have the electrolytes with glucose, which basically is going to uh, stop any ability to burn fat. And the only thing it probably would do for hydration is if someone had diarrhea, for example, there are types of oral rehydration therapies where they're adding glucose to minerals because in the intestine, the glucose will help retain sodium. So that's a different situation than if you're exercising and trying to be hydrated, or if you're not exercising and trying to be hydrated. To truly hydrate the cell, you need uh, all the electrolytes. You need sodium, potassium, chlorides, calcium, and magnesium. Now, the professor who wrote the book Waterlog, which I'm gonna put a link down below, had some fascinating information in relationship to drinking more than what you're thirsty for. You have a thirst mechanism, and some people will say, well, you know, we don't really know when we're thirsty. We just have to force our body to drink so much water, and that's just the way it is. But he evaluated tremendous amounts of data, and he looked at studies that weren't funded by companies like Gatorade, for example. And he found that even runners, long-distance runners, when they drink too much water, when they're not thirsty, they get into trouble. I think a really good principle would be to drink when you're thirsty, and don't ever force yourself to drink too much, okay? Because you can start to dilute these electrolytes. Now, on the flip side, if you're prone to a kidney stone, you need to be drinking at least two and a half liters of fluid every single day. But I would also add electrolytes to that. Now, are there any tests that you can do to see if you're drinking too much water? Sometimes people say, well, check your color of your urine and it should be clear. But I think there's a better test. In fact, it's pretty inexpensive. You could buy on Amazon or another platform, uh, these little urine strips that measure something called specific gravity. And that will give you a good rough estimate on whether you're slightly dehydrated or you're really dehydrated or you've drinking too much water. Because on this urine strip that you're gonna get, you're gonna measure a lot of different things, but specific gravity measures and compares the density, how concentrated your urine is to actual water. Now, water has a specific gravity or density of one. And urine, if it's normal, should have a density of 1.002 to 1.030. So if your um, urine specific gravity is low, okay? And what I mean by low is if it's less than 1.010, you have mild dehydration. So the closer you are to the specific gravity of water, which is 1.000, um, the less electrolytes you have and the more you need to take electrolytes or drink less water. So specific gravity kind of tells you the concentration of particles in your urine.
And of course, when you drink a lot of water, you dilute that. A lot of the electrolytes that you're going to get will come from your food if you eat healthy. But also realize there are things that you're consuming that are depleting your electrolytes too, like refined sugar, like alcohol, like the things that I mentioned that act as a diuretic. But this video is primarily on just drinking water. There is a situation of drinking too much water and you need to find the right amount for you. And so there are a lot of variables. If you're working out, it's hot outside and you have a very high metabolism, man, you need to drink a lot of water, but just make sure you drink the electrolytes with it. But for the general person who doesn't really work out that much um, and it's not summer, uh, I would pay attention to your thirst. I would use that as a guide and try not to force yourself to drink more than what your body really should be taking. Now, I think the best next video for you to watch would be my video on electrolytes, okay? So check it out. I put it right here.